Once upon time there is a couple and they do not have any children. They wish to have one and pray God every day. These people have a little window at the back of their house, from there you can see a splendid garden and it is full of the most beautiful flowers and herbs. It is, however, surrounded by a high wall, and no one dares to go into it because it belongs to an enchantress, she has great power and all the popel in the world is afraid of her. One day the woman is standing by this window and looking down into the garden. She sees a bed, someone plants the most beautiful Rapunzel there and it looks so fresh and green that she longs for it, she quite pines away and begins to look pale and miserable. Then her husband is alarmed and asks, What ails you, dear wife? Ah, she replies, If I can't eat some of the rampion and it is in the garden behind our house, I shall die. The man does not want her wife die, so he decides to get some from the garden. At twilight, he clambers down over the wall into the garden of the enchantress, hastily clutches a handful of rampion, and takes it to his wife. She at once makes herself a salad of it and eats it greedily. It tastes so good to her that the next day she wants it three times as much as before. In the gloom of evening he let himself down again, but this time things do not go well, because he sees the enchantress standing before him. How can you dare, says she with angry look, descend into my garden and steal my rampion like a thief? You shall suffer for it. Oh, answers he, let mercy take the place of justice, I only make up my mind to do it out of necessity. My wife saw your rampion from the window, and she wanted to eat it so badly. She thinks she will die if she cannot eat it. If you are telling the truth, I will allow you to take away with you as much rampion as you will, only I make one condition. If you have a child you must give it to me. I will treat it well and care for it like a mother. The man accepts everything because he is afraid of her. One day the woman has a child, the enchantress appears at once, gives the child the name of Rapunzel, and takes it away with her. Rapunzel grows into the most beautiful child under the sun. When she is twelve years old, the enchantress shuts her into a tower. The tower lays in a forest, and it has not a door or stairs, but quite at the top is a little window. The enchantress places herself beneath it and cries, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Rapunzel has magnificent long hair, it is fine as spun gold. As she hears the voice of the enchantress she unfastens her braided tresses, winds them round one of the hooks of the window above, and then in the enchantress climbs up the hair falls down, by it. After a year or two, the king's son rides through the forest and passes by the tower. Then he hears a song, it is so charming that he stands still and listens. This is Rapunzel. The king's son wants to climb up to her and looks for the door of the tower, but there is no door. He rides home, then he likes her song very much, so that very day he goes out into the forest and listens to it. Once he is standing behind a tree, he sees that an enchantress comes there, and he hears how she cries. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Then Rapunzel lets down the braids of her hair, and the enchantress climbs up to her. I too will try my fortune tomorrow, says he, and the next day he goes to the tower at evening and cries. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Immediately the hair falls down and the king's son climbs up. At first Rapunzel is terribly frightened but the king's son begins to talk to her quite like a friend and tells her that he loves her song very much and comes to see her. Then Rapunzel loses her fear and the king's son asks her to marry him. He is young and handsome, she thinks. He will love me more than old Dame Gotthel does. She says yes, 
and lays her hand in his. I will go away with you, but I do not know how to get down. Bring with you a skein of silk every time that you come, and I will weave a ladder with it, then I will descend, and you will take me on your horse. They agree that until that time he will come to her every evening, because the old woman comes by day. The enchantress remarks nothing of this, one day Rapunzel says to her, Dame got hell, you are so much heavy for me, but the young king's son is not and he is with me in a moment. Oh, you wicked child, cries the enchantress, what do I hear? I thought I separated you from all the world, and yet you deceived me. In her anger she clutches Rapunzel's beautiful tresses, wraps them twice round her left hand, seizes a pair of scissors with the right, and she cuts off, and the lovely braids lay on the ground. And she takes poor Rapunzel into a desert, she has to live in great grief and misery. On the same day she casts out Rapunzel, but the enchantress fastens the braids of hair. King's son comes and cries. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. She lets the hair down. The king's son ascends, but instead of finding his dearest Rapunzel, he finds the enchantress, she gazes at him with wicked and venomous looks. Oh, she cries mockingly, you came to fetch your dearest, but the beautiful bird sits no longer singing in the nest, the cat got it, and will out your eyes as well. Rapunzel is not here, you will never see her again. The king's son is beside himself with pain, and in his despair he leaps down from the tower. He escapes with his life, falls into the thorns and they pierces his eyes. Then he wanders quite blind about the forest, eats nothing but roots and berries, and weeps over the loss of his dearest wife. Thus he roams about in misery for some years, and at length comes to the desert Rapunzel has twins, a boy and a girl and they live in wretchedness. He hears a voice, and it seems so familiar to him, so that he goes towards it. Rapunzel knows him and falls on his neck and weeps. Two of her tears wet his eyes and they grow clear again, and he can see with them as before. He leads her to his kingdom and they live for a long time afterwards, happy and contented.